God. Praise God. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exalt, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here we also call sinners to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today we are going to be talking about a very interesting topic, the misunderstood side of God's love. The misunderstood side of God's love. And our short reading is from the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, chapter 19, verse 12, we stop at 23. Genesis 19, 12 to 23. And our case study is Lot in Sodom. Let us pray. Dear Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit, with holy boldness, Father, we appear before you to say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for releasing yourself to die in our place. Oh, thank you, blessed Holy Spirit, for dwelling, with, dwelling within us. Thank you for putting up with us. Thank you for how you guide us every day. Oh, Father, we pray, Lord, that with this lesson, you will clarify about your love to our hearts. In any area where your love has been misunderstood, in the name of Jesus, or misinterpreted, oh, Father, bless your word to every listening heart. And let it do good in our own lives. For in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, have we prayed and asked. Amen and amen. Our foundation text is from the book of Job, chapter 37, verse 23. Job 37, 23. As for the Almighty, hallelujah, we cannot find him. That is, you can't know his beginning. You can't find out everything there is to our God. Hallelujah. He is excellent in power. Hallelujah. In judgment and abundant justice. He does not oppress. As powerful as he is, he does not oppress. Hallelujah. What is the misunderstood side of God's love? God's love can be, number one, crushed. Please listen. It is not only ignorant to think that because God is love, he cannot be made angry. <laughs> Such thought is equally dishonest. Although Lot was a righteous man living in a spiritually awful and morally gross place, a time came that God became fed up with the iniquity of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I dare say God is fed up with our world already, with what is going on. God has feelings that can be affected. An example was when Israel departed from him and began to worship idols. God said, I was crushed by their adulterous heart. He said that to the prophet Ezekiel. And his jealousy can also be aroused. In like manner, he can be made angry through disobedience. If you think the God of the Bible 
He said, goody, goody, dumb, dumb God. You have another thing coming. That you can disobey him and he will still be smiling. He's not. Uh-uh. So he can be made angry through disobedience and independent living. As the Bible says, he is angry with the wicked every day. The wicked in God's sight is not only somebody who rapes or commits murder. The wicked, actually the number one on the list, is somebody who has told God, you be, your own, you be God and let me be my own God. Let me live my life the way I want, independent of you. That is number one wickedness on God's list. Although Lot lived righteously in Sodom, but his starting life out independently of God later brought him into the crosshairs when Sodom and Gomorrah made God's love angry to the point of him destroying them. When God's love shows a believer that it has been angered, it is because we are still precious to him. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 58. Psalm 78, verse 58. For they provoked him to anger with their high places. High places is where the children of Israel will go to worship idol, the Baals, uh, during the time of the kings. And moved him to jealousy with their carved images. What is your own carved image? Huh? Money? Or your job? Ambition? Career? These are all carved images. Although you don't have them carved in your house, but you have them carved in your heart. It can make God angry. Is in danger of his anger, who chooses in life against their maker. Is in danger of his anger, who chooses in life against their maker. Moving on. God's love can be confrontational. God's love will not let unholiness slide. It's not going to happen. Mm -mm. He will confront our spiritual inconsistencies with his holiness. God is not a glorified Santa Claus who gives his children whatever they want. Oh no. Neither is he a doting grandparent who overlooks indiscipline because of too much love. Oh no. God's love calls Sodom and Gomorrah out. And with that, Lot was literally called out of the city too. God's integrity and law of perfection will not allow us to violate his divine values with impunity. It's not going to happen. If he judged the Lord Jesus on the cross, because the Lord Jesus was carrying my sin and your sin, and he judged him on the cross, because he became sin for us, even though he has never sinned. You think you will slide by? Oh no. Hence, he confronts us with our sin. God's love through prophet Nathan pointed the finger at David and said, Thou art the man. The two angels told Lot that God sent them to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their outcry has grown great before God. God confronts us when we have sinned, not to shame us. Please, let me say that again. When God confronts you with your sin, as a believer, is not to shame you. Even if you're a pagan and you know what I'm saying 
is hitting home right now. It's not to shame you. Oh no. No. It's to show that he is through, uh, uh, is to show that he's through with us. No. It's not to show, to shame us, or to show that he's through with us. Let me say that again. When God confronts you, or when he confronts me with my sin, it's not to show that he doesn't love me anymore, to shame me, no, or to show me that he's through with me, no. And it's the same for you. It's not to tell you I'm through with you, I don't love you anymore, I want to shame you, no. But it's to help us keep a short account with him. So there's no wedge built by sin between him and us. Even if you an atheist, an agnostic, a Mohammedan, a Buddhist, even as I'm speaking right now, or you are a fornicator, it doesn't matter what you have done, a murderer, and you are thinking, oh, are you pointing the finger at me? It's not to shame you. If, you, if your heart is being troubled right now, that is God's love reaching out to you that you can keep a short account by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what evil you think you have done. If you say, God, forgive me, he will forgive you. All right? And if you are a child of God, it's not to shame you or shoo you off. No. It's to make you come back to your senses like the prodigal son. So you can be restored back into the fellowship. Let's go to the book of Psalm chapter 50 verse 21. Psalm 50 verse 21. These things you have done. This is God speaking. And I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you. But I will rebuke you. And set them in order before your eyes. You see. When God says, I'm going to show you what you have done wrong, is a sign of his love. But when that happens, a lot of Christians, they, they actually think maybe God doesn't love them anymore. Oh no! I will set in order for my children if they are contravening my law. But for my neighbor's child, I look the other way. Why? Because he's not my son. The best I can do is tell the mom or the dad, I saw your child doing this yada yada yada. That's the best I can do. You see, big difference. When he confronts, it's a chance for us to confess and conform. God wants us to be holy. And that's the number one priority of God. So when he confronts you, when he confronts me, it's not to shame us, it's not to show us off, it's to conform us in holiness to the image of Christ. When he confronts, it's a chance for us to confess and conform. Moving on. God's love can appear to be callous. It's hitting on him. Abraham pleaded for God not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if ten righteous people could be found in the cities. God could have left these two evil cities to continue to run amok. But God's love would not allow that. In that, please listen. When evil is allowed to continue, to fester, it makes more converts. And that is why God is going to judge this world. I was talking to a lady about five or six years ago. She dashed into, her, into the ministry building. And we got talking. I thought she was a believer. And so I was like, oh, so we started talking about the world, what is happening. And I said, well, unfortunately, 
the world is on a collision course with God's judgment. And she was like, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in negative gospel. And she arrogantly just said it like she knew what she was talking about. And she stormed off. I'm like, wait a minute. What Bible are you reading? You see, that is liberal gospel for you. They don't believe in God's judgment or in his wrath. They think, oh, God is love, so everything must be good and dandy. You have something coming against you. God's love shows up even in his wrath and judgment. Because if he doesn't judge evil, then evil makes more converts. And increases the number of its victims. Such that the godly are no more. Because people will say, why bother to follow the word of God? Why bother to follow the law of God? If God doesn't punish evil, you see. And the faithful vanish from among men. That's what that Bible, the Bible verse is saying in the book of Psalms. You see. That is why God's wrath will judge evil. God's love can appear cold and callous, sometimes by allowing afflictions into the lives of his children. Oh, don't get me started. Do not get Josephine Zion started. When I've been in the crucible, and I thought, maybe God doesn't love me anymore. I look back now, I thank God for that time. I thank God for his tough love. It's actually to show me that he loved me that much, that he will hurt me, he will wound me, to get me back into fellowship with him. You see. God's love can appear cold and callous sometimes, by allowing afflictions into our lives as his children to correct us of our missteps. This is because a believer's spiritual well-being is the most important to God. If you think God cares about your house, about your car, or even about your health, above your spiritual well-being, you don't know the God you're serving. If you're serving the God of the Bible, his number one priority is your spiritual well-being. Third John says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Some people have taken that and they mongled it. The devil is a liar. Your soul is prospering first, then is praying that your health prospers as well. But, of course, the prosperity uh, peddlers, they, they, they're taking that out of context. So, our holiness, our spiritual well-being is so important on God's priority for our lives that if we allow afflictions into our lives to get us aright, if we are going crazy on it. When God's love allows a correcting storm to pound us. You remember Jonah? I think we talked about Jonah last week or two weeks back. You see, that's God's correcting storm. When God allows a correcting storm to pound us in his love for us, it is to save us from self-destruction. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 7. Hebrews 12, 7. If you endure chastening, that is discipline, correction, harsh correction, God deals with you as with sons, that is legit, legitimate child. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? If your father loves you or your mom, then we apply 
the bond of uh, education, to the seed of knowledge. The wheel is right that floods is also is called of love. Is right that floods is also is called of love. Moving on. God's love can be cut off. And that's the saddest part. Now, it's not God that will cut that uh, love off. It's you. You can cut it off. Oh, yeah. I can cut it off with my behavior. But God will not cut his love off toward us. No. But with our behavior, we can do that. And that is really sad. God's love in the extreme, please follow this carefully, We respect your freedom of choice. Oh yeah, it will not interfere with that freedom that he has given you. Oh no. Mm -mm. Which is why he allowed his children who are adamant on having their way to live with the consequences of their actions, like Lot, who went headlong into Sodom and Gomorrah. As a result, he lost his wife and ended up fathering his own grandchildren by insisting on going into Zohar instead of going to the mountains as the angel initially instructed him. When the angels brought him and his family out from Sodom and Gomorrah, they said, go now to the mountains. Don't stay near. Go, run. And he said, don't, don't let me go there because some evil may fall before me. Let me stay in Zohar, which is nearby. And the angel said, you want to go there? Okay, have your way. Now his wife looked back. So he lost his wife because the, the command was do not look back. As if that was not sad enough, he went into Zohar and there he committed incest with his children, his two daughters, because they, they made him drunk. All the way he had his way. And he lived with the consequences. Why the Bible teaches that a true believer cannot be eternally lost? No. However, God can take a believer to heaven prematurely if they refuse to turn away from their error like Ananias and Sapphira. That's what Apostle Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was uh, teaching the church that if someone among you a, as a believer will not stop sinning, will not stop going crazy, commit the body of such a person to the devil. That his soul might be saved. It means a physical death. God will cut that person off. And the soul of that person will be taken to heaven. You see. So if as a child of God, you keep going your own way, you may be writing a letter to premature death. That's what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. The Holy Spirit gave both the husband and wife the uh, opportunities to retract their story and tell the truth, and they wouldn't, and they died. For those who have refused to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, while they had the chance to receive Christ but refused, God will equally respect their choice of freedom to choose Satan. And we allow them to go to the lake of fire because God will not interfere with their choice of eternity. Uh, people, some people will say, if God is love, why did he create hell? He created hell for the devil and his angels. Are you the devil? Uh, are you the devil? 
God didn't create hell for anybody, any human being. No. He created hell for the devil and his angels because of the evil that the devil is doing. Don't you like that? Don't you like the devil and his demons to go to hell? That's why God created hell. But when human beings, when they say, hey, God, you go in your own lane, let me go with the devil, and God will say, don't do that. I didn't create hell for you. God, leave me alone. Then it, it will come to a time they will cut off that cord of love, and God will say, you really want to go with the devil to hell? Okay, help yourself. That's what happened. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse, verses 31 to 32. First Corinthians 11, 31 to 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. That is, if we correct ourselves when we know we are sinned as believers, if we quickly come to our senses, we will not be judged. God won't have to do that. But when we are judged, and if we are stupid as believers and refuse to confess on time, then God will do that job. He will judge us. We are chastened of the Lord. He will weigh out and whack us. Oh, yeah. That we should not be condemned with the world. God is looking at the world right now because a day is coming that He's going to pour His wrath on this world and the world will be out. Boom. Zapped out. Totally. Like it, had, it was never here before. And that is why God corrects His own children right now because. We are not going to be judged with the world. So it corrects us as we go along to keep us holy. His strike is right. Hallelujah. To set us aright. So we are alive in his light. Hallelujah. His strike is right. To set us aright. I'm grateful for his strikes. So we are alive in his light. What have we done so far? What is the misunderstood side of God's love? God's love can be crushed. God can get angry with his children even though he loves us. His love can be confrontational. God will challenge and call us out when we are in the wrong. His love can appear callous. God allows sufferings as, a, as training tools to set us aright with himself. His love can be cut off. God will allow the consequences of our choice if we fail to repent. As a believer, is what you are going through right now a result of the misunderstood side of God's love? Huh? If you are in the ringer because God is correcting you, know that it's God's act of love. Not because he has given up on you. Oh no. Our Father is merciful. Ask for forgiveness and watch how he leads you. Right? If you are living as you like and God is not correcting you, it's because you don't belong to God. God's discipline is a sign of legitimacy in the life of an individual. If God has led you to your ways, it's not something to gloat about, but something to be heartbroken over. Because the end of such an individual is eternal separation from God into total darkness of the lake of fire. However, you can still change that. That is the good news. You can turn around and give everything over to the Lord Jesus and declare your dependence on Christ Jesus right here, right now. 
He will save you. He has promised. He will. He saved me. If you are ready for that kind of surrender, a link is coming up. Follow that link. Father God, we thank you for your love. Oh, help us, oh Lord, to keep a short account with you. Not to be strong-headed in our foolishness, even when you correct us. And as for those who are going to want to know Jesus' page, Father, meet with them. Holy Spirit, open their heart. Give them the understanding they need. For in Jesus' name, I'll be free. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry, 